Hello and welcome to Against the Grain. What a fantastic 217 season we're having. So far we've had about 18 formations this year with uh, 11 formations in just over the last month. Let's take a look through them. First formation was on the 4th of May at Willoughby Hedge near Mir in Wiltshire. It consisted of a central arm or axis with um, circles that sort of get smaller as they radiate out from each end of the axis. It was about 175 feet or so wide and brought up memories of the Stony Littleton formation that appeared back in 2010. Just over three weeks later, on the 21st of May, at Oxley's Copse near Stitchcombe in Wiltshire, we had another formation. I have to say, I didn't really like the look of this formation when I took a closer look at the lines uh, radi radiating out from the centre. I thought they looked a bit messy and wasn't overall impressed, but this was without any ground survey. Unfortunately, before I could get there, the farmer had cut this one out. But later, Karen Alexander drew up the formation and to my surprise, found that there was a hidden golden ratio and that actually the geometry was quite complex. So it's one of those, don't know, not sure, 50-50, could be, and I'll put it over to one side for now. Following down the 22nd of May, the third formation arrived. This time, it was in the shadow of the Cern Abbas Giant down in Dorset. As you can see, it's a vesica-shaped design with a, a kind of body or image or abstract body or image located in the centre. Now, the Vesica Pisces is well known to sacred geometers and it's also well known that this uh, symbol has been used in iconography connected to Jesus Christ. Speaking to Jaime Malsan in Mexico, uh, he's had a lot of response where people believe that this is connected to the Lady Guadalupe or the Virgin Mary, which is one of the biggest pilgrimage sites in Mexico. Of course, people make pilgrimages to the shrine of Guadalupe in Mexico City. Um, sometimes they, they, they do it on foot and, and, and go hundreds of miles. And then when they get to that last part, which is the huge plaza in front of the, uh, in front of the basilica, they get down on their hands and knees, and, or just on their knees, and, and they walk on their knees across the plaza, into the basilica, down the aisle, until they get finally to the, to the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Quite why the uh, Virgin Mary would be put next to a giant with a giant penis is beyond me, but uh, I think it's safe to say that the Vesica does hold some kind of spiritual or religious connotation. Three days later, on the 25th of May, we had the first of two sets of formations that appeared in one night. The first was at Chilcombe in Hampshire. A series of concentric circles that radiate out from the centre and have different proportions to the rings as they get towards the circumference. Karen Alexander drew up the formation and as you can see here these proportions uh, are achieved by placing squares which enclose each circle. You can also see that there's a two-tone effect or sort of alternating effect to the standing and laid crop which radiates out in the concentric circles. This reminds me of the Spartacle Woods formation back in 2010. This seems to be in some way a counterpart to this new formation at Chilcombe in that the implicit squares are here marked in the field and as you can see uh, they are alternating with standing and laid crop in the same fashion. I do love to see formations that are connected over spans of many years, in this case seven, but we've seen formations in the past which have been connected over larger spans of time, 20 or 25 years. So there is some building of a narrative here which we can see in the evolution of the geometry or themes. The next formation to arrive on the 25th of May was right next to the Milk Hill White Horse in Stanton St Bernard, Wiltshire. I got along to this formation and conducted a ground survey and did a report. 
It's the 25th of May 2017 and I'm here underneath the famous white horse at Milk Hill for the third of this season's barley formations. It's a cross type design with circles on each corner and one of the circles has a kind of scalloped edged design to it on the outside. The lay itself looks beautiful and crisp, buoyant and springing back up to the light. We're going to walk around now and have a look at some of the finer details. Come and join us. I'm now at the edge of the design on one of the scalloped edges and what you can see is the barley is laid down beautifully cutting itself into the standing crop flowing around and laying itself back over the main pathway and at the center here just at the edge there's a, a circle type design where the barley itself is laid over the main body of, of crop. One of the beautiful features of crop circles is attention to detail and I've noticed over the years uh, an effect where a single row of crop is left at the edge and not flattened with the main body of crop that you see here, but is left sort of half standing up, positioned right against the standing crop on the perimeter. It's as if it gives the effect of water splashing up and down and it follows itself along all the way along the perimeter. Another beautiful feature of these scalloped edges is as the crop itself flows around and cuts into the standing crop, it comes back out and covers over the pathway that runs around the edge. And the way it cuts around and lays back over and sort of feathers itself over, just once again adds that kind of beautiful touch that we often see in formations. So at the edge of the pathway now that runs around the uh, perimeter of this scalloped type design at the edge of the formation, and when it gets to the end of the pathway, instead of turning like an abrupt 90 degrees to go off in that direction, we have a sort of feathered in part of the barley laying into the standing crop here. Three days later on the 28th of May at Summers Lane in Broad Hinton in Wiltshire we had another two formations in the same night. First one I'll look at is the pentagram which as you can see was beautifully crafted with lots of little circles uh, located on the inside and on the outside of the formation. You'll notice that uh, there are no pathways or walkways in between these little circles which is something we feel would be impossible to do because of how close together the actual stems of crop are. I visited this formation on several occasions, first when it uh, arrived and as you can see from the aerials here the lay was beautiful, it was growing back up to the sun, it was wisping along and was weaving in and out, looked absolutely splendid on the ground with no damage discernible to my eye. A couple of weeks later I went back and as you can see from the photographs here there is clear damage where you can see people have walked in this formation. Now this raises the question, if this crop was initially laid down by uh, heavy board damage crunching and crushing as it went along, then a couple of weeks later we would expect to see all of the crop damaged or dying uh, and change colour. What we see here though is just a path where people have walked and for the majority of the path you can see that the crop is still in the same condition it was when I first visited the formation. Now the second formation at Summers Lane has probably been dismissed by many people because it just looks fairly simple with concentric circles and some half circles edged in around the, uh, the edges. But actually this formation has turned out to be something of a geometric conundrum. There are some geometric anomalies inside this formation which have had quite a few of us scratching our heads for the past few weeks and we still haven't found a resolution yet. I had a chat with Michael Glickman on Skype about this. Michael, thanks for joining me. Um, how are you finding the 217 season so far? I, I, I find it um, an astonishing start of the season. We've had 17 or 18 formations, each one of which is lovely and articulate. I agree with you, I agree. We all felt last year uh, that something special might happen uh, this year and so far in my view it certainly seems to be turning out that way. Who knows what lies ahead for uh, July and August. We've only 
got to wait and see, I suppose. Well, I think for um, halfway into June, it's been exemplary. I know that you and I have been discussing the broad Hinton One, as we've called it, uh, formation, which is this series of concentric circles with the arced circles around it. And I know that you, Karen, and myself and several others have been scratching our heads with regards to some of the geometry contained in this. Tell me about it, Michael. What's, what's going on inside this formation? What, what they're doing is something which I can't fully understand. They're setting us a dilemma. Mm. Uh, they have chosen the most simple and logical of geometric methodologies, which is the basis of the flower of life, yeah. um, a series of circles of radius X is drawn around the perimeter of a central circle of radius X, yeah. and there are six of them. And this ends with a deliberate fudging, a deliberate mistake. Uh, but a mistake perfectly executed. Mm. This is not a, a mistake which makes you think of a few lads in the field thinking, oh, God, we blew it. This is a mistake which has a will and an intent and is laid perfectly and beautifully. And, of course, many people fell into the trap. Yeah. Now, the other trap that was laid within this formation is that one of the dilemmas which you and I have been discussing for a year or so is the fact that I believe it is impossible to make a circle without marking its centre. Yes. It's certainly impossible for us here in the third dimensional reality on planet Earth and to draw a circle with the compass without sticking the po point in the paper. Yes. Um, and there have been in the group circles many perfect discs and drums of impeccable circularity with a completely untouched centre. Yeah. Now here, there's a big disc standing crop and there is a mark at the very centre which um, susceptible and gullible and innocent souls assume, well, that's it, it's man-made. So they don't pause to think, how did they get from the tram line to the post hole position to knock the post in. Because all around that central area is perfect, undamaged crop. Well, I mean, we know we've talked to these people who claim that they go out and do these things and they say that they can successfully walk through the gaps where the seed drills were planted. But I've tried this and I've filmed up close you know, how close together these crops are. And in my view, it's impossible. I haven't been able to replicate it. So I'd just love one of them to pull the iPhone out of his pocket and film himself doing it so that we can all see it. But getting back to the geometry of the formation, um, so what have you found in your analysis? Well, in my analysis, I'm, I'm, I have to say, I, I'm banging my head against a concrete wall. I'm looking for meaning in it. And um, Mr. Van den Berg has uh, found that the points of the radius, including what I believe is a deliberate mistake, um, performs a 19-fold geometry. This is a 19-fold division of the inner ring, yeah? Yes. Now, why, so is, that, why is that significant? I, I, I tell you the truth, I don't know. Right. Is it something that's easy to do, to divide a circle by 19 points? Is that something regular? <laughs> no, it's hard to do. It, it produces a, an irrational number. Right. Um, but 
I mean, 18 is easy because a circle divided by 18 is 20 degrees. Right, of course. Uh, but 19 is, uh, I mean, I've got a calculator here, but I'm not going to do it. Right, but it's uh, an irrational number. So basically, this formation seems to have a number of challenges for people on all levels. If those people that are considering whether or not formations are man made or from somewhere else, um, have got their challenges with regards to a, a hole in the centre that doesn't have a path to it. Uh, and then those of us that are interested in the geometry are also equally challenged in trying to find out what the hell is going on inside of it. Um, why they've chosen to do this this way. Amazing. And, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it's that thing uh, that the old music hall... Uh, the old musical stars used to say, always get off the stage while they want more. <laughs> well, I don't know if they've got off the stage yet, but certainly with this but, one... They've... I mean, I think that they, they bang down a formation to stretch us. And this, um, one, and this one's certainly stretching us. Leave us something to ponder. I agree. I agree. Two days later, on the 30th of May, we had another formation, this time at Chicklade, again in the county of Wiltshire, right next to the A303. Unfortunately, the farmer cut this one out soon after its appearance, but not before my friend Stephen Grant got down there and managed to get some excellent ground shots. As you can see, the lay looks particularly nice, and Stephen reports to me that there was no discernible damage that he could find, uh, certainly not consistent with any crushing from boards, etc. Also, as you can see from this photograph, the formation is actually laid in a dip in the field. It's not on flat ground. Now, this adds another level of complexity to the creation of a crop circle, because what we found in the past is that the circles that are in uneven or on uneven surfaces have been compensated and made into ovals so that they look like circles from above. This is something we feel would take specialist equipment and specialist knowledge and would require a lot of trampling around inside the formations to actually get right, which would of course damage crop. Moving on to the 3rd of June, we had another formation right next to the ancient site known as the Sanctuary. As you can see from this footage, the sanctuary itself is a series of stones that have been placed in the ground to represent where wooden posts that made up the site of the sanctuary were once placed. This, you can see, consists of uh, an outer ring with an inner circle. And looking at the formation, this seems to mirror this same design that we can see at the sanctuary. Simple ring with a circle in the centre. Now, I'm sure that the proportions of the uh, outer ring and the inner circle uh, had some significance, and I was very pleased to see that Karen Alexander did her magic, and uh, as you can see from this drawing, shows that there is an implicit heptagram, or seven-pointed star, uh, within the formation. This has to be designed, because these crossover points that are exactly touching this inner circle show that this design has been uh, actually laid down with this implicit sevenfold geometry contained within it. Then, the very next day, the 4th of June, we had another formation, this time in the county of Oxfordshire, which lies north of the county of Wiltshire, uh, very close to the Uffington White Horse, the oldest white horse. Now, this formation was beautiful. Have a look at my report. I'm at the Uffington White Horse in Oxfordshire, a county just outside Wiltshire, for another formation in Young Barley. This one's a six-fold formation made up of circles of different sizes which sort of look like bubbles as they go out from the centre. There's some beautiful, nice details to the lay. We're going to have a walk around now and I want to point some of those details out to you, so come and join me. As I walk forward now, you'll see that a mixed amongst the different graduated heights of crop, some of the stems are just standing completely straight and untouched. Have a look.
All of these little ones here, just random ones. One there, two there, completely untouched. I'm standing in the ring that surrounds one of these circles in this formation. And it's the ring of laid crop, but it's not all completely flattened. For example, I'm standing next to a tractor line and as the crop goes off and lays off around in the ring behind me, there is a 12 inch bunch of stems which are left completely standing. And as we go over into the ring, some of it starts to graduate and go down at different heights. Then there's an area of completely flattened crop. Some of it's sort of swashing around as if it's like water. And then it begins to rise again as the ring progresses. Come and have a look and see if you can see what I mean. Here's the sort of 12 inch band of completely standing crop here. And then beyond this, we've got crop, that, cro that bunch there is laid down, this bunch here is, ri is risen up. And then beyond this, we have a band of more flattened crop. Some of it's bunched up, as I mentioned, at the edges. And then as it progresses off in front of me, more progressively, the barley stands up. Now the other formation of interest, Michael, is the one up at Williston Hill near the Uffington White Horse, the Bubbles the Formation. Bubbles. Yeah, that's right. Now I've, I've pointed out uh, that um, this has many circles, uh, standing circles inside of it, all precisely located and there are no holes in the centre and no pathways to the centre, something which you and I uh, as you say, I've discussed for the last year or so, and we think it's impossible to do this. Yeah, the other thing, uh, yes. certainly in regards to the bubbles, which is impossible to do, is to maintain that precise thickness around the whole uh, donut of each circle. I mean, this formation has many... Um, the circles of differing sizes, but the wall thickness, the wall thickness on each one is precisely controlled. Yes. And you sent me, very kindly sent me the drawing, the diagram that you've done, where you notice that the outer six circles, the bigger ones, uh, if they're kind of moved in or compressed in towards the center, that they fit perfectly between the slightly smaller circles closer to the center. This this was, I have to say, this was a delight to me because I thought, oh, they might fit. Right. They might fit. And then I moved them in and they clicked with a precision which just blew me away. You know, they just, it was as though the housing for them was waiting with open arms saying, Come here, come here. <laughs> closer, closer, closer. Click. Well, I certainly found it beautiful on the ground. I went up there and did a report and the lay was exquisite. It wasn't all laid down uniformly. There were different varying heights. None of the crop itself, which was young barley, was damaged in any way. And even in between the circles, the big circles at the center, the lay goes in two opposite directions. So it's a very narrow gap. And we've got one lay coming sort of this direction and another set of lay coming the other direction. It was beautiful on the ground. Yeah, it, was, it was lovely. It was like a jewel, really. I agree. Sadly, the farmer recently has uh, taken it upon himself to cut it out. Obviously, um, we've seen this trend over a number of years now where farmers are deciding to cut out formations to prevent people going onto their land. Sad. We hate to see those of us that love formations. Are obviously, sad to see it go. But... That you and I both know that the political situation with relations with farmers and trying to get um, some kind of agreement is has been a very big challenge for us over the years. Yes. Yeah. This is true. Mm. Well, Michael, thanks very much for joining me. Um, it's a great pleasure. Um, I've no doubt that over the next coming months I shall be calling on you again to uh, give us your commentary on the formations. That Whenever we're... you like. Thanks very much, Michael. Great to see you. 
Finally, we arrive at our last formation, the 11th formation in the past month or so, which appeared on the 9th of June at Maiden Bradley, again in the county of Wiltshire. Now, unfortunately, none of us were able to get to this formation to uh, do a ground inspection or take photographs or conduct any kind of research because the farmer, unfortunately, cut it out soon after uh, it, it appeared. My friend Stephen Grant got down there too late, and as you can see from these photographs, what was left was a little sad for those of us who like to get along to formations and check them out. So that's it, 11 formations in the last month, some interesting information there. Uh, we've got the solstice in a few days time, usually we expect to see formations around that time. And of course, who knows what lies ahead in July and August. So please subscribe to the channel and share this video widely. Thanks very much for your support.